Now let's move on and take a look at what happens um, in the turbine. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the uh, the part of the system that contains the turbine, and that exit the condenser generator and the cooling tower. So we have we have so saturated steam coming into the into the turbine. Right? Uh, it's flowing through. Now this particular turbine is not open to the atmosphere, so it's a system that's <coughs> sealed. Okay, so we have 0.5 here, 0.5 will also be here. I'm going to call this 0 0.6. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 here, that's the exit from the separator and also the inlet to the turbine. And we have all our properties. 0 0.6. Let's take a look at it um, one at a time now. M dot six. As we go through the turbine, there's no losses in mass flow rate. So M dot six will be equal to M dot five, which we already know because we have calculated it. The um, the pressure at the turbine outlet is also um, uh, uh, set as a design condition such as the, uh, the pressure that we had for the separator. Okay, So it will be known to you and in the example that we were talking about in the lab it was at uh, 0 0.1 while the pressure at the inlet because it was defined by the separator was equal to the uh, uh, the, the separator pressure, and for the example that we're talking about, it was at seven. So this P6, right, is equal to P turbine outlet, um, and it's known. So I'm just going to define it like this. But for the example again that we looked, it was 0 0.1 uh, bar, absolute. All right. So we have our mass and we have our P. We know. We make the assumption, and this is the, uh, the big fat lie, I, I, I told you, um, uh, I told you, I to was telling you uh, when we were doing the lab, that um, we are assuming for the purposes of this course, and this is not, again, 100% um, correct, that what's going to come out of the turbine is going to be saturated steam. And we're doing that because we want to keep things simple and um, we want to retain our ability to look uh, properties up on the steam table and simplify the, uh, the equations that we have to do. So what's coming out of here is going to be saturated vapor right? at a lower steam, sorry, at a lower pressure. So P6 is smaller than P5. So what happens to the enthalpy then? I know my <clears throat> phase and I know it's saturated vapor and I know the pressure. Okay, That means I can look it up. So H6 will be equal to H. I know it's vapor so it will be G at P6. Excellent. Alright, here are H, P, M dot, and our um, phase. So the saturated steam leaves the turbine and enters the condenser. What's the job of the condenser? Well, to condense. That means uh, it will turn the steam, the saturated vapor, into water, into saturated liquid. Okay? So, coming in, saturated vapor, coming out at 7, we have saturated uh, liquid. This is achieved at a constant pressure. So the pressure at 7, P7, is actually equal to P6 which, uh, again, as we said, is defined by the turbine. So we know our uh, phase, and it's saturated, and we know the pressure. What do we do? We can look up the enthalpy. So H7 
is equal to H. This time our subscript will have to be F as we're talking about liquid at P6. Okay, what's missing? Our M dot. This thing is a close uh, component. There are no mass losses. So whatever's coming in at 6 will have to come out at 7. So M dot 7 is equal to M dot 6. Perfect. So as I'm doing this, let me use a bit of a color here. I'm going to come out at lower pressure here. Right? Through here and through there. I know the values of all those points. I am now finally ready to calculate the power output from this system tapping into a single well, because that's the scenario we've set. For uh, that purpose, we're going to use an equation that I've given you before. Mm -hmm. To write it, I'm going to have to make some space. P is power output from the turbine, and is given as eta G eta T M dot through the turbine, delta H through the turbine. All right, let's take a look at this. Again, uh, referring back to the <coughs> example I gave you in the lab, if you look at pages four and five. In page four, we're given the values for G uh, for the uh, efficiency of the generator and the efficiency of the turbine. So we know both of those. M dot through the turbine. Let's take a look. Okay, here's our turbine, right? Our uh, liquid flows through. We have no losses in mass flow rate. So the uh, M dot through the turbine will be equal to M dot 6, which is also equal to M dot 5. So we know this, and it's equal to M dot 6. Excellent. Well, what about this? This little fellow here. Ah, if you look at the bottom of your assignment, you'll see that we have an equation for that too. So we have delta H through the turbine is equal to H at the steam inlet minus H turbine output. So H at the steam inlet, hmm, that would be H of the turbine steam inlet, sorry, that would be H5. And it's known, okay? Minus H turbine output. Now, this is where most people get confused and make a mistake in the quiz. Don't take H output to be at the outlet. Outlet and output, two different things, okay? So don't do, when you're asked to do that delta H, do not take delta H, uh, sorry, do not take H6 minus H5, okay? That's where uh, most people who do this wrong, uh, that's what they do. What you want to do instead is use, is use equation four. All right, so let's take a look at what we know. We know H5, as we said, we know these two. We also know M dot, because it's equal T, because it's equal to M6. And we're trying to figure this out, okay? And we said that delta HT is equal to H5, which we know, minus HT output. So then what's, uh, how do we get HT output? Well, uh, we look at equation four, on page four of eight in your assignment. And you can see that that is equal, give it as one minus XT. And then we'll talk about this one minute times H condenser outlet. All right, let's take a look. This is the condenser. That's its outlet. Uh, H at 0.7, do I know it? Yes, I do. HF at P6, and I know P6. So that would be H7. Excellent. And it's known. Plus XT times H 
turbine outlet, okay? Not output, outlet. This particular point is a physical point and it's here. It would be H6, do I know it? I bet I do, it's uh, HG at P6. H6, I also know this one. Excellent. So what's left? That XT property there. Um, that's just a percentage. And it's actually a bunch of calculations that I've done for you. Uh, includes a lot of the simplifications we've done on, uh, on this part of the diagram. And uh, it's given. Turn the page. 5 out of 8. It's equal to, in the example, 89%. So that is also known. So if I know this, then I know that. I can plug it in there. And I can find P. Now a note on P, keep in mind your units, right? We're working with what? There's no units for the etas. Um, N dot will be in kilograms per second, okay? Delta H would be in kilojoules per kilogram. If these two go away, we're left with kilojoules per second, right? Which is equal to kilowatts, right? Uh, <coughs> I'm gonna, since I've sold this before, I'm gonna guess at the answer for this example. And I'm gonna say that it's close to say 2.2 megawatts, maybe, give or take. So this problem asks if we want to produce 35 megawatts from the system using multiple wells, right? How many wells uh, similar to this would we need to drill? Well, you would have to uh, use number of wells will be equal to P total that we want over P this P. In, uh, in this problem, the answer was 15 point something, so there's no such thing as a point something well. You drill 16 wells. Now, what I haven't done so far, because we went, we went through this, right? Before we move on to the cooling tower, I'd like to take you uh, uh, to the T's diagram. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Remember uh, the assumptions that we've had going through the turbine. So we have 0.5, right? And I'm going to see, so let me note here. So this was P at the separator, right? And that's the operating pressure of the separator. Now here, I'm going to have 0.6. And that would be P at the turbine outlet. 0.6 is here. I've gone from the inlet here down to six. And again, I've mentioned this in the lab. This is not correct. It's an oversimplification, especially if you're not a first year and you've done thermodynamics before, uh, you'll know that um, we usually take either the isentropic version, which will go straight down, or our flow will look like this. But this course is not about thermodynamics, so you don't have to worry about it. I just want you to understand how things change as we go through the cycle and how we produce uh, electricity through it. And for this purpose, in this example, this simplification is good enough. And what does that say? It says that as we're expanding from 5 to 6, as we're going through the turbine, our phase will not change. It will remain saturated vapor. Okay? Just like we said here. And why do we want to do that? Again, for the purpose of making your calculations easier, you can just look stuff up from the steam tables. We are at six. We're about to enter the condenser and go all the way to 0.7. Remember, this is a saturated vapor line. The condenser, its job is to take the fluid, and change it so that its properties now change, um, touch this line, the saturated liquid line.